It's a busy lunchtime in the Wellington CBD. A woman from an art supply store is in the toilet, when without warning, a man smashes through the roof. Dazed and confused, she returns to work, only to learn that that man was Arthur Taylor, a dangerous criminal, an alleged psychopath, who had just escaped police custody with the help of an armed gunman. It's hard to believe this story could happen in New Zealand. And I wanted to tell it. So I travelled to Auckland to meet the woman on the toilet, Karina Rossiter. I think it was a Tuesday and I had just come back from lunch, walked into the toilets and there was some dust in that on the toilet, locked up. And the next thing I knew the whole ceiling fell through with a man in it. Boom. I can't remember a lot of it. Apparently I screamed. I don't remember it. But I was not sitting on the toilet. He told me he was working on the air conditioning. So I thought, oh, it's some guy who's working on the building. Went and told my manager, and they said, we've got no one there. And then suddenly we had all the police, the dogs, the guys with the guns, everything all around. I know a lot of people criticise the police, but let's not call them dogs, eh? <laughs> Arthur Taylor studies a lot of law, represented himself. The man who fell on your head then is the lawyer who's cross-examining you. He did focus on the fact that he was nice to me. <laughs> I don't even think he's spoken third person. <laughs> so he's like, Your Honour, my client, <laughs> who is me, stands in front of the court to bear witness that I was nice to the victim. Pretty much. And I said, yes, he was. So well, well, he wasn't nice. He <laughs> fell on your head. Do you not think that, at the very least, he should say sorry? He should. Actually, I'm starting to shake now. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> just nervous. <laughs> just, <laughs> there is a part of me that would actually just like to meet him. And get revenge. Yeah. Put him in the toilet, <laughs> fall him on the him. Yeah, make sure he's going. <laughs> it feels like there's something to be finished here. I think so. Almost 20 years on, Karina still didn't have closure. I knew to finish the story, I had to find Arthur Taylor and get that apology. When I learned that Taylor was recently out of jail, I rushed to Dunedin to come face to face with a man the police described as a dangerous criminal with no social or moral conscience. What are you doing? You bring me a little box or something? No, nice to meet you, Arthur. Arthur's house was wired with alarms and cameras, and I was nervous to sit down with one of New Zealand's most notorious criminals. Arthur, I was terrified to meet you. Why? Because you're New Zealand's most well-known criminal, potentially. I've been out of jail for four years, haven't been convicted of a f***ing hell enough. Well, I read your record, you got done for meth in 2020. Accused of it, I haven't been convicted. Come on, I ain't presumed innocent. OK, well, I presumed you were guilty. What the fuck for? <laughs> How did you end up in such a severe prison? Because I dug a tunnel out of Mount Crawford Prison. You yep. got sent to a regular prison, you broke out of that. I broke out of Addington and Christchurch. You broke out of that. I broke out of Blenheim Police Station. Yeah. I went for a real craze of breaking out. <laughs> <laughs> it felt so fucking good. One minute you're locked up, next minute you're free. So you dug a tunnel out of a prison? Fucking I thought it. How did that go? Fucking awesome. I wasn't going to break out, but I thought, well, I'm in here. This is a fucking good alibi, this place. If I can get out and commit crimes and come back, I've got a certain thing. That but, is genius. But it went wrong, mate, because a guy could... Oh, always... how could this plan go wrong? So one day afternoon, they called us all out in the oven, and Bully says, Taylor, we've found a tunnel going out of your cell. You're going to preliminary, mate. Now, this is big news in them times. All the crimson news almost scared of Barry. But to be fair, you were trying to dig you out of prison. Yeah. You see, like, I deserve it. Oh, now you're looking at it, mate. You think, yeah, but at the time, you think, these fucking cunts i have thwarted my plans. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you end up back in Palermo de Molada? Went back to uh, commercial burglaries, pubs and places like that. We went there one night, me and another guy, a couple of bars off the window. So a lady came in, and I just grabbed her as she came through the door, and I came in from behind. That's terrifying. I know it's terrifying. She made a point in the talk, trial, saying, Mr. Tart, you was very nice to me. Okay? <laughs> You got good baddies and bad baddies. I like to think I was a good baddie. Sometimes in jail, I used to wish I was a psychopath. Honestly, it's a fucking burden being a fucking empath. Wait, you're not an empath. Oh, you you can't be like grabbing a lady from behind. I've been told I am. And say, and say, don't fucking move. I didn't say it like that. Okay, say in your nicest voice. We're not here to hurt you. We're not here to hurt you. Hello, lady. We're not here to hurt you. Hey, obviously, it's here for when you look back at there. <laughs> and I don't regret it, eh? Arthur, this has yep. been so interesting. I've got a great deal of time for you, guy. You gave a lot of people pleasure in jail. No one loves giving people pleasure in jail more than me. <laughs> Well, if you're not in jail, you don't need to have any fear. They'll call me the yeah. pleasure king, because I'll be you'll pleasuring you'll be, all the guys in jail. After, and no one will fuck with you. And I'll be giving out the free hand jobs. No, yes. I want to give the hand jobs. I'm, I'm, I'm consenting. Yeah. You would be fucking popular, mate, but you wouldn't get the respect you should have, mate. Jail's all about respect. What if I gave really good hand jobs no. that were very respectful? Me and Arthur instantly became friends. He claims he's given up his life of crime. You also have a police scanner next to your bed. That's right. No, they were just interested in how they operate in that, you know. Well, any criminal would be. A retired criminal, <laughs> 
Thank you. Bank managers retire, fucking TV presenters retire. Criminals retire too, mate. And he wanted to show me the good work he was doing in the community, running a scaffolding company to employ ex-cons trying to get back on their feet. They're looking forward to meeting you, sir. Do I, do I want to meet them? Of course you will. What sort of crimes have they done? Mainly violence. This did not put me at ease, and neither did his chainsaw. But was Arthur really a good guy? His new workmates seemed to think so. I wanted to be like him when I was in prison, so I followed him and then I heard he's giving opportunities out. He's heard it many times, he's helped many of us. Do you think you'll ever go back to jail? I probably will. Well, what do you mean yeah. I probably will? I don't plan on it, but it could happen. OK, OK, OK. Yeah, okay I wasn't okay. planning on going to jail last time, but <laughs> it happened. Nice to meet you, sir. I'm Guy. Okay. Oh, I don't know where the hand's been. <laughs> hey, you've heard about the Pleasure King? Yes, yes, I have. So I'm worried if I went into jail, I'd be too desirable as the Pleasure King. I do some of the best hand jobs. I heard hand job funny. <laughs> it's always good to be out of prison, but life's easy in there. Your washing's done, you're fed. And you that's why so pre- many people go back. Yeah! It literally says violent offender on your hand. It's all coming off in two weeks. Oh, fuck yeah! Yeah, I'm getting a Māori tamoko with tartan in the background. Good on you, bro. It was clear Arthur was having a positive impact, even if I still couldn't figure out why he had a chainsaw. We hung out all day, and that night we even went to an escape room. In order to escape this room, you must carefully. Hey, fr- get out. Arthur! What the fuck? Arthur, it's an the escape fuck? room! We're supposed to follow right. the clues! Arthur, oh, calm down! Arthur, calm down! Calm down! Arthur, leave the room! We got we beat the previous record by almost an hour. I was having so much fun, I'd completely forgotten Karina and why I was there in the first place. There is a part of me that would actually just like to meet him. So the next day, I headed back to Arthur's to confront him about the day he fell out of the ceiling. I needed to get Arthur Taylor to apologize for falling through a roof onto Karina Rossiter and discover how he escaped the handcuffs of two policemen with the help of a gunman. When that car pulled into the underground basement and it's parked and the three officers got out with me, cuffed between two of them, that's when the gunman appeared out of fucking nowhere. But you hired the gunman. I can't comment on that. <laughs> Did he get away? What's he got away? What's that guy's name? Money Royal. Very convenient you know his name when you had no, nothing to do with that man. He's an old man of mine. <laughs> yeah, I know I fucking caught you. Were, you. were you a bad man at this time? I was a man that, um, you know, had a job to do. You know, I'd had to... Wait, what was your job? Getting out of custody. <laughs> OK, so you, you organise a gunman to come and break you out of custody. Great. And then how'd you get caught again? I need cash, right? So I'm up on the roof of the BNZ, crawling along to get to where they hold the business deposit box. I fall through the ceiling right above a woman's toilet. <laughs> but unfortunately, she fucking went out after I departed the scene like her manager. What a snitch! Look, my, I had a be- wonderful, beautiful mum. She instilled in me a deep respect for women and children. We don't fucking harm them. Even if you're falling out of the roof and onto a lady on the toilet. You're like, good day, lady. I'll see you again sometime. <laughs> Probably in court, <laughs> as I am certainly going there. Yeah, I'm one of those silly cunts that's empathetic. How did you, how'd your court case go? It could have gone better. <laughs> It would have been better if you had a proper lawyer as opposed to... It would have been better if the fucking thing happened. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so this woman you fell on, you need to apologise to her. Well, I do apologise to her. Yeah, I do apologise to her. No, you need to her. apologise to her. Yeah, I don't. Well, I think she was quite happy that she didn't run into a ruthless criminal. <laughs> well, she did. It quickly became clear that getting an apology from Arthur was going to be harder than I thought. But if Arthur had taught me anything, it was how to be cunning and resourceful. I hatched a plan to get Karina and Arthur in the same room together. I see you as being a more extreme version of me. I often think I have ADHD. I don't think I have AIDS. Right? I think you might. You did you? Have no. you ever been diagnosed with that? No. I mean, I grew up as a bloody kid. No one knew what fucking ADHD was, mate. You know, we, we, me and you, we talk all the time. Maybe a little bit of anxiety? Yeah, yeah no, I used to have quite a bit of anxiety. Yeah. yeah. What do you think I should go and get diagnosed? Well, I don't know. It could be interesting. Well, I'm a bit fucking bit old to get on Ritalin or something, aren't I? <laughs> Hey, that would put me into overdrive, mate. No, don't do this. <laughs> I was convinced that both of us needed to be tested for ADHD, and reluctantly, Arthur agreed to travel to Auckland for a test. This was the perfect cover to ambush Arthur and get Karina her apology. But on the morning of the test, he hired a rental car because, turns out, there was something he wanted to show me. I'm taking you to Perimero Prison. What? Don't worry, they like me up there, OK? The guards do anyway, not the fucking bosses, they hate me. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, those are the ones you got to worry about, the bosses. Oh, well, stop, 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 stop. No, Fuck, right. that was scary. <laughs> that car was coming right at us. We were right. He didn't even come in 10 metres of us. But there was a truck right there. I didn't see the truck. Was that coming? You didn't see the truck. That was no, what no, I was no. worried about. What did you think I was worried about? Oh. I've driven with so many weird people. I've driven with the Mungra Mob. <laughs> you can't say I'm worse than the Mungra Mob. You are. The oh, Mungra Mob is a great you, driver, you, to be fair. No, what do you think of the Mungra Mob? Oh, there's only a few people, and I can count them on one hand, that I would think are truly evil fuckers. Where's Ray he? And Perry. Wait, Wait that's where we're going. We'll be right there. We've got a load of shotgun in the back and we're safe as, right? That makes me feel more nervous. What are we going to do that escape room and you smash the door open with yeah, a fire dude, extinguisher? It's a, it's a fucking escape room. What are we going to be doing in the escape room if we weren't escaping from the room, guy? We're supposed to do little puzzles. Look, we got the job done, didn't we? Yeah, we got the job done. Did you lock the window so I can't put the window down? No. Are you going to murder me on this no. trip? No, I'm not even shitting you. If you murder me, I'll be pissed off. I'll be pissed off too. Why okay? will you be pissed off? Because I'll be pissed off. I'm there a good man I like. Oh, I thought that was sweet. Arthur took me to Auckland Maximum Security Prison, formerly known as Paremoremo, where he himself was locked up for many years. Oh, there's a lot of sadness going on in this place, and a lot of fun too, happiness. Wait, <laughs> what do you mean a lot of fun? It doesn't matter how bad the circumstances, you try and find a bit of humour in it. I told you, guy, you're well liked in prison, because you brought a lot of fun and laughter to prisoners over the years. And also, I'm the handjob king. This place that costs us taxpayers 350 million plus, does not solve crime, it creates criminals. Instead of this, what do you think we should do? I think all rehabilitation should take place in the community unless they are a threat to the public or public safety. Mm. Amongst all the bullshit, you mm. do actually have some good points. Too many people okay. are put in prison and mm. it doesn't help them, it only makes their situation, which is already Especially bad, worse. Especially a place like this. It's um, very sad returning to this place, actually. Because young lives have ended and there's nothing worse than blood on concrete floors way away from their whanau and family that they love. They have ended here. Young lives, 19-year-olds, their lives have ended on this cold concrete floor with blood pissing out of them. And I'm sad about that. Okay. For the first time since I'd known him, Arthur was clear and coherent. I almost felt bad luring him away to a fake ADHD test. Escape criminal Arthur Taylor has never properly apologised for falling through a bathroom roof onto Karina Rossiter. So I use the cover of a fake ADHD test to get them in the same room and force Arthur to apologise for his terrifying surprise all those years ago. Now there's a reason why I've brought you here to this place today and that's because I would want to administer an ADHD test. I've been analysed by fucking every nut doctor you can imagine mate, including Dr Nick Wilson, the country's top expert on psychopath. He gave me a clean bill of health. Okay, well today we're doing an ADHD yep. test. Here we go. Yeah. Question number one. Oh, what's going on here? I've been through this before. Are you, are you okay? I probably would have preferred a stripper jumping out of a cake. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just say, just say, just say. Take a seat, take a seat. Good. Arthur, this is Karina Rossiter. <laughs> oh. This is the woman you fell on uh, many years ago. March the 23rd, 2005. I think it was. Yeah. yeah, and that's why we've done this. Yeah, this is, this is a revenge falling. <laughs> you don't need to do a revenge, revenge call. I regret it immediately, believe me. <laughs> because now I had to make an instant decision. Do I incapacitate this lady? Don't, no, don't, no. Don't, don't need to re-traumatize no, her. Karina, I'm are you going okay? No, I'm okay. So I'm You're doing doing so. I can't okay. do it. So I, said, I don't know what is more scary for you. Falling through the roof or having to be in a room with fucking me and Arthur yelling <laughs> well, at each other. Between the two of you. It's so intense, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Years ago you did this, yeah. you fell on this poor lady, and you never apologised. Well, I've never had the opportunity to apologise. No, wait, no, wait, no, wait, what are you busy doing? Excuses, excuses. I'm, I'm sick of hearing your excuses. All right, Arthur, I think it's time to, um, to right. end it and to apologise. Yeah, I apologise sincerely and for any distress, and, well, I know you would have got shot, and, um, and I just hope that when you, you know, work down as good as in the circumstances. Perfect. Thank you, and I appreciate that. Right, thank much you, much appreciate it. I really appreciate it myself, too. Yeah. That's really sweet, guys. That's really sweet. Yeah. Thank oh. you for bringing us together, guys. This was one of my greatest achievements. Group hug? Group hug. <laughs> oh, he's a big bugger, isn't he? He is. <laughs> Karina had closure, and Arthur was redeemed. Awesome. And I guess you could say, my work here is done. I would never compare myself to Christ the Redeemer, but you have to say, there's a lot of similarities. We're both big redemption guys. Ah. Don't grab my leg, Arthur. That's what I did at Nuremberg when I were hanging the Nazis. I guess you could say that I became the new, better Jesus. And I ascended into heaven.